Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is intended for complete beginners to Anki. So if you've heard of Anki or even if you've never heard of Anki, I'll basically be going over what it is and how to use it step by step. And I've actually got real flashcards here so that I can explain my things a bit more clearly and explain how they correlate to actual Anki itself. So if you haven't downloaded Anki already, you essentially want to go over to the Anki website and click on download. Select the version that's appropriate for you I have a Mac so you want to download this version. Once you've downloaded it, installed it, open it up and you'll get a screen which looks like this. So the first thing you'll see here is that it says deck and it's got a default and it's got two zeros either side. So a deck is essentially a set of cards for a particular topic. So for example, if I have my paper flashcards, imagine I've got two flashcards here, I know you can't see them properly, I've two flashcards here for clinical examinations and I've got two flashcards here for ENT, ear, nose and throat, right? This will be in my ENT deck, this will be in my clinical examinations deck because they're separate topics. So what you can do in Anki is you can go over to this little cog wheel icon here, click on rename and let's click, let's type ENT for my ENT deck, right? You can obviously, you might be studying biology, chemistry, whatever subject you're studying, just name your decks accordingly. At this moment in time, I have zero cards in my deck. That's why these numbers are zero because it means I haven't created any cards yet. So I don't have any cards that I need to study. Now, if I want to create a new deck, I can go over to the bottom here where it says create deck and just click on that and it will ask you to put a name for your deck so let's say you know I've got my ENT deck already I want to create a clinical exams deck okay so now I've got a clinical exams deck and now I've got an ENT deck if you think about how your normal flashcard works you're gonna have a statement at the front asking you something and then you're gonna have ex your information at the back and essentially when you're studying a flashcard you look at the front and you think of what the answer is and then you look at the back and if you get it wrong, you do that card again and keep doing it until you get it right. And then when you get it right, you put it at the bottom of the pile so that you see that card in a slightly longer period of time. This is exactly the same principle that Anki works on. And I'll show you how exactly you create and review cards. So to create a card, you can go to the top and click this add button here, or you can use the shortcut A. And if you click on that, you'll be brought up with a small box that looks like this. And you can see here, it's asking for a front and a back. This is exactly the same as my paper card. I write something at the front, my question, I write my answer at the back. So for example, my card might be, what does JVP stand for? And then in my answer, I can write jugular venous pressure. You know, if only my medical school finals were that easy, unfortunately it's not click add and then that there you go that card has been added into your database if i close out of this you see now that i've got one card here it's actually gone into my default deck not the clinical exams deck so it's not gone into the right deck the reason for that is because when i clicked add you'll see some options here what type of card i want to create and the deck i want to put that card in so that's what these two options here mean i've selected default which is why my card went into the default deck rather than the clinical examinations deck so I can go ahead and change that by selecting which deck I want my card to go in. And if I select clinical exams, now when I create a card, it will go into my clinical exams deck. So I'll show you how to do that and then I'll show you how to move my card that went to the wrong place into the right place. So let's think of another thing to put in here. So what does a raised JVP indicate? My answer is gonna be venous hypertension. It's not a very good card because you can answer it in many ways, but obviously just for this demonstration purposes. Now when I click add, it should go into my basic clinical exam deck. So if I cross out of this, as you can see, this card has now gone into my clinical examinations deck. Now, if I go into browse, that will show me a database of all the cards I've created so far. So you see on the left hand bar, the sidebar with various different options, anything with this icon here, so overlapping sheets of paper, that's your deck. So if I go into my default deck, you'll see this is the first card that I created. What does JVP stand for? Jugular venous pressure went into that deck. If I go into my clinical exams deck, this is the second card I created that went into that deck. So if I want to move my first card into the clinical exams deck, what I have to do is just right click on that card, click change deck, or alternatively, I can just click command D and then I can select the new deck I want to move that card into. So in this case, I want to move it into the clinical exams deck, click move card and then if I go into the clinical exams deck now you'll see both of my cards that I created and the default deck is now empty because I just moved that card so if I cross out of that I'll show you what studying a card actually looks like so you know when you're studying a card you literally just look at the front turn it over look at the back 
that's how you study a card using paper flashcards. Now, with Anki, you'll see here that I've got two, meaning I've got two new cards left to study. Those are the two cards that I created. In order to study them, I'll basically just click on that deck and click study now. And then there you go, that's the first card I created. It will ask me, what does JVP stand for? So essentially, I have to have a think about what the answer is. Okay, what does JVP stand for? Jugular venous pressure. And then once I've thought of the answer in my mind, I can click show answer, or alternatively, I can click the space button to show the answer. So if I click space, it would tell me, okay, jugular venous pressure. So now I have to decide, did I get that card right or did I get that card wrong? And depending on that, you press one of the three buttons down here. So if I got a card right, I can press good, meaning that it will show me that card in less than 10 minutes again. If I got that card wrong, I can press the again button, meaning it will show me the card more often. And if I got this card straight away, it was really easy, I can press the easy button. And so I don't need to see that card as often. So it will show me that same card again in four days. So for the purposes of here, I can click good or I can click the space bar to mark the card as good. Then here you go, this is my second card. What does a raised JVP indicate? So suppose I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know the answer. What does it indicate? Mm, I really can't think. I can reveal the answer. Venus hypertension. Oh yes, that's what it is. I remember now, yep, definitely. But I got that card wrong. So now this time I'm gonna press again, which means it'll show me that card in less than a minute. And as you can see, it now shows me that card that I just marked good again. And how often you see these cards and when they come back and how long the intervals are when you press again, easy and good, depends on the settings you have on your deck. So let's talk a bit about those. Go back into your decks and if you click on the cogwheel here and click on options and it will bring this pop up here. Now it might look a bit alarming with all these settings that if you're not used to this, you have no idea what it means. So I've made a detailed video going over what each of the setting means, but if you're completely new, then just use my default settings that I normally use. So for the steps, put in 10, 1, 4, 40, meaning it will show you that card again in 10 minutes and then in a day. That's how many minutes are in a day. Show the new cards in a random order. You wanna do 20 new cards. On the review, set maximum interval to 9999. That might seem like a big number, but it's the most effective way to use Anki's algorithm. And if you're unsure why, again, just check out my video on the explaining all these settings in detail. Maximum interv interval set to around 180. Lapses you can set to 20. New interval you can set to 50. Leech threshold is set to four. Leech action tag only, that's fine. And then click OK. And that will just save your deck setting. There's also actually another type of card in Anki called close cards. So instead of just being front, question at the front and then answer at the back, what closed cards are is a statement where you fill in the blank. So for example, in a piece of paper, I would have a statement like this, labyrinthitis causes a blank hearing loss. The purpose of this card is to fill in the blank. So it's basically asking me what type of hearing loss does labyrinthitis cause? And in the back, I've got my answer, which is sense zero neural. So labyrinthitis causes a blank hearing loss. The answer is sensory neural. That's essentially what a closed card is. It's just a fill in the blank card. You can create a closed card on Anki as well. And the way you do that is again, go over to your ad. This time on the type, you want to click on it and select close and click choose. This card I want to put into my ENT deck. So again, I'll select deck and click the ENT deck so that I create a closed card on my ENT deck. To create a closed card, you essentially want to firstly type out the entire statement. So, so this is my statement labyrinthitis causes a sensorineural hearing loss. And the fill in the blank part I want to blank out in my card is sensorineural because I'm asking what type of hearing loss does labyrinthitis cause. So I select that and I click on this button here, which looks like a square bra bracket with three dots and then another square bracket. Or you can use the command shift C keyboard shortcut. So if I click that, you'll see this curly crows bracket C1 colon colon curly brackets wrapping around your work. It might look a bit confusing, but it will make sense when I click add to add that card into my deck. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I review that card. So here you go, on my ENT, I now have that one new card that I created. If I click on that deck, click study now, then it will show me, okay, labyrinthitis causes a blank hearing loss. So now my purpose is to guess what that blank is and then press space to see if I've got it right or not. So in my mind, I'm thinking, mm, okay, labyrinthitis causes a sensory neural hearing loss. So I click space and there you go, that's the answer, sensory neural. And I've got that right, so I can press good. You see here earlier that the good interval was less than 10 minutes, the again interval was less than one minute. Now it's one day. That's because I've changed that Anki settings so that 
a good interval is now going to show in a day instead of less than 10 minutes. If I press space, I'll see that card again in a day and it will tell me, okay, congratulations, you finished this deck. So if I go back to my decks, you'll see that my ENT deck now has zero cards left because I just studied it. However, you'll see in my clinical exams, I've got three decks in the due column. Those are the cards that I've left to do from earlier when I demonstrated. Now you might be thinking, why would I create closed cards? What's the difference between basic and closed when I could have just said, what type of hearing loss is labyrinthitis and then put sensory neuron on the back? Well, the reason closed cards can be powerful is because you can block out multiple words in that statement. So for example, I'll show you that same statement again, but this time I'll be blocking out two words to create two cards from that one statement. So I'll reuse that same statement. So I've got 11 that is causes a sensor in your hearing loss. The first close I want to create is this word here. Now you'll see here that it's come up red and it says show duplicates. That's because Anki's detected that I've already got this exact same card, which is a handy feature to have when you're creating cards. This time I'm also blocking the word labyrinthitis. So if I select that and click the close button, and again, you'll now see C2 wrapping around the word labyrinthitis. So when I add these cards, it will create two cards. One telling me blank causes a sensor neural hearing loss and the other one telling me labyrinthitis causes a blank hearing loss. I'll show you what that looks like once I've added the card. So now you see here, I've got two new cards to study that I've just created. First card is asking me labyrinthitis causes what hearing loss? So okay, sensory neural. Now the next card is telling me what causes a sensory neural hearing loss? So now I'm thinking, okay, what is it that causes a sensory neural hearing loss? Labyrinthite. And there you go. So that's useful for extracting multiple different facts from a particular statement to really ensure you learn that statement properly. This is not the best example because there are many other causes of sensory neural hearing losses. Labyrinthitis is just one of them, but it just goes to show you the principle of how a closed card works. Now you see here, there's also a stats button. If I click on that, it will show me how well I've studied my card. So it keeps track of, you know, all the things I've been studying. It's a bit complicated. So I think I made another video explaining it. If not, I'm not really sure. But you know, that's a little bit too complicated about this basic um, video. You don't need to worry about that for now. All you need to do is just make sure you create cards, know how to create cards and do your reviews every day. And the other option that's quite important to know is the sync option. For this, you need to sign up for an Anki web account, which is completely free. And it just lets you sync your cards and your decks across multiple devices so that you can use Anki on your phone, you can use Anki on your iPad and sync your collection to the deck, to the cloud basically. So I hope this video has been useful giving you a basic overview of how Anki works and how to use and create cards. If you're new to my channel my name is Abian, I'm a final year medical student studying in London. If you're interested in my newsletter you can check out the previous issues and sign up below. With that being said thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in my next video.